Now we welcome in ESPN's Trevor Maddich. Trevor, what are you most excited for in the 2016 season? To see how they'll they'll take it to the next level. I mean, you've got a new coaching staff and led by Kalani Sataki, who played here for Lavelle Edwards. He went on a mission, and he fully understands how to maximize the unique advantages that BYU has with the kind of guy that comes here. You, we talked to you on the phone all fall, so it's fun to have you in studio, by the way. So, hello. hello. It's great to see you in person. I know. Like, once a year. It's I know. Awesome. It also yeah. gives me a chance to, like, go over there and, like, fight Spencer. Because <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to him during the break? It doesn't need to be mentioned <laughs> on right. the air. I didn't know whether to thank oh, him or said, break his legs. He but. said, Trevor, you have creamy bravado with your voice. Vibrato. Vibrato. Yes. I don't, I, know, bravado, I don't even know what that means. But smooth. He's got, I the, said he's got that baritone yeah. voice. Did you sing in, in college or anything? Uh, I, I, only when I wanted to clear the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> there you go. No tunnel singing. Please, don't, yeah. please don't beat me up, Trevor. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, listen, if it were legal, I'd think about it. But <laughs> the law's on your side. Dave, oh. Dave gave you a hard time about uh, mentioning, like, eh, they probably won't win all of them. It's pretty obvious that this is a tough schedule. There's going to be at least a loss, two, three, if not more, right? Um, wh- where do you see maybe the tougher games on the schedule for BYU? All of them, really. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's really unrelenting. Even Toledo will be tough. But, I mean, it, it is unrelenting the way it opens up and then just continues to go. And, and that's, that's the thing about this. Normally, even with a conference schedule, you've got a couple tough games. Then you, got, you, know, you can kind of take a break a little bit where physically you're not going to get beat up. Then you take another break. Then you've got a couple of really tough games. Then, then maybe another one where you won't get beat up so bad. This one is week after week after week after week. Their depth will be tested because it'll be awfully tough. I mean, it opened up against Arizona and what amounts to a home game for Arizona at, uh, at Glendale where the Arizona Cardinals play. You know, and then UCLA, BYU almost beat them last year at their house, and they'll be better this year. BYU will be better this year. It'll be an interesting thing. But, I mean, when you look at this, you look at Southern Utah, and that, you know, you would think, and, and UMass, you would think those might be, you know, those are the games you'd pencil in as winnable, but I wouldn't guarantee it. But because by the time they get there, you never know what kind of attrition will happen. You, and you talked about games one and three. You skipped number two. That's a uh, somewhat significant game there for Brigham. Yeah, that, uh, that, th- I didn't know they were still playing football up there. Are they still playing football? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. The bowl game last year where Utah jumped out to, was it 35 nothing? Yes. And then BYU clawed back and we're, we're in position to maybe win that game. That showed to me a whole lot of character. I, I have tremendous respect for Utah football, tremendous respect for Kyle Whittingham and, and the way he runs his program. The, it is, and, and by the way, we were teammates here. Kyle used to just beat me up physically. He was a middle linebacker. I was a hot shot center. Uh, a couple of years younger than him, and I would go out and try to block him, and he would literally pound me into the dirt. I never knew the flavor of soil so intimately as when Kyle <laughs> Whittingham would drive me into the ground. And so, so I, I've got a lot of respect for Kyle. And so I'm just, I'm just sort of talking trash when it comes to the rivalry when I talk this about this. This is BYU TV. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, they'll, you know, up, up there in Salt Lake, they'll be, uh, they'll be, look at what tri- former BYU, you know, no, no, we're just having fun. Absolutely. <laughs> Can you think of a more compelling offseason? Because I can't with the new staff and the way that the staff has been comprised along with the schedule that we've just been talking about, the return of Tanner Mangum, Taysom Hill, and Jamal wow. Williams. I mean, it's, there's so much there. So many storylines, and and the thing is, I mean that that that's a national topic of conversation is this quarterback battle. Th- right now, there are quarterback battles in some very high-profile places: Alabama, Notre Dame, Georgia, USC, and BYU is in that conversation. And, and part of it is because of the respect that Taysom Hill has, and being talked about as a, as a Heisman candidate for for a couple of years before he got hurt. And then with Tanner Mangum and the way he stepped off the plane from Chile and then provided us with some of the most thrilling football moments of the season. I think nationally, people look at this quarterback competition with great interest because you've got two guys that, that would be starting in most places around the country. We're featuring a shot of both of them on BYU TV at the same time. The Almanac, or Media Guide, has both of them as well. At some point, one will emerge as the starter. Yep. Why wouldn't it be Taysom Hill? Because Tanner Megan might outplay him. And I talked to Coach Sataki about this, and – he said that the only way he knows how to do it is to let him battle it out on the field and without politics being involved. And the reason that's important is because there are other guys on the team and they need to see that the guy that they think will help them win is the guy that starts. And it needs to be not just a quarterback, but every position. And, and if you do that that way at the quarterback position, establishing that paradigm as a new coaching staff, that politics are nice and politics are rich in this quarterback competition. But the guy that will help the team win the best will be the guy who will play the most. 
that will filter into the rest of the team year after year after year. And that's one of the reasons this is not just about the quarterbacks this year. How many wins will BYU need to rack up for you to consider this season an overall success? I, you know, that's a great question, Spencer, because fans will have to look at BYU football and judge them a little differently this season. I think they'll be better on the field. I think their talent will be better. I think their, their, their young talent last year will be more experienced, especially along the O-line. But I think that because of the nature of the schedule, the, the win-loss record might not improve, and it might get worse, even though the team gets better. The way to watch this team this year is how competitive they are, how much they fight to the end, how well they, they stay in the games. Now, some of these teams, they'll probably run away with it. Some of these teams might get away from them, like Michigan did last year. But on the body of the season, how competitive are they? Because this is one of the toughest schedules in the nation that only the top few schools, I mean the Alabamas and Clemsons, et cetera, would be able to get through unscathed. So BYU, the question is not will they go undefeated. That's, that's not a fair question, although who knows they could. <laughs> but uh, I can see the three now. Trevor Maddox says, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> but, but to watch how they, how they gel together under this new staff and how they compete. It, exactly along those lines is my next question because a Gary Croton came in in 01, BYU starts 12-0, looks daily gets hurt. They lose the next two. But they started 12-0 first year. Jim Harbaugh. Obviously, one of the best coaches in college football. Puts his imprint on. It's good. Normally, it takes time, right, for, for a new staff. How do you see this playing out with BYU's new staff? Well, it does take time, and there will be new schemes going in as well. And one of the things about the coaching staff is that they will need to, on both sides of the ball, only install as much offense and defense as the players can assimilate and then still play at maximum speed without slowing down and thinking it. Really, going in with this new offense with Ty Detmer, we don't know exactly what they'll do, except it'll be more traditional. But they'll go some up tempo. They'll they'll do they'll do stuff that you know you're used to seeing. But the thing is, when you huddle up and go to the line of scrimmage and run a pro style, it gives you the opportunity to get more things from the playbook into the game, and it allows you to substitute more. It allows you to maximize every single play. But it also requires more of the quarterback. It also requires more of the receivers. And so the, it's a learning curve that you've got to do. The up tempo. Uh, style, the, you might run 90 plays a game. So if 10 of those plays are kind of wasted because they're not good plays against the, what the defense shows, that's okay. Run the next one. Run the next one. Run the next one. You, you make up for poor quality plays at times with a whole lot more plays. With more traditional offense, every play counts, and you maximize every play. But to do that, you have to know what you're doing, mm. and that learning curve will take time. Perfect way to end the first hour of BYU Sports Nation with ESPN's Trevor Mattis. Trevor, Thanks for coming to Studio B. Let's get your autograph Can on our new flag. get your Herbie Hancock? Sure. The, uh, I'll flag. put just a big old giant X. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that right now? Is that on there. Yeah. Okay.